doing, but we had to. It was a great partnership when we began our work. As I wear two hats, by the way, I'm the uh, director of the Urban Management Center, the UMC, and also convener of Intact Gujarat chapter. So, as both my roles, um, having felt um, important that we work together on bringing water to Sadh uh, we worked with ACF. Mauna especially on how we could work collaboratively and make and uh, look at the challenge. The, the trigger was that uh, Intact Delhi office, the headquarters, asked Gujarat chapter to make bylaws for two important monuments in Gujarat. One being Sarkej Roja and the other being Dwarkadish Tem Temple. Uh, both unique in its own sense and we all know the importance in both cultures, how they, they are uh, looked at. Sarkej being very close to heart, close to where we live, where we grew up, uh, being a student of architecture, started sketching early days in 80s, 85, to now, uh, and a monument which was being lost. We could see in our eye through uh, the time period that something was missing. Um, we felt very uh, responsible in a way that a citizen of Ahmedabad, we have to do something and bring water to the city. Uh, how would we do that? We are not ASI, we are not NMA, which is a um, the National Monuments uh, Agency, which is now newly set up. We are not, we are just citizens and we definitely hold a not-for-profit offices where we could make a difference. Um, so what uh, we have done very briefly, it's a very long presentation, but I will not go into detail, but I would like to focus on how a collaboration can be struck and something can come about. We have se seen kind of uh, what Bhavna has taken you over time and the chronology of uh, the importance. <coughs> this was a photograph that said change was like this at one point of time and there was no water. You know these gates allowed water to flow from one lake to another as a natural source. Next. Um, next. Um, again, we're not going into much more detail. Um, these, this was a methodology which we adopted as uh, looking at uh, the monument. Uh, we understood the legal and the regulatory framework and as a group we, we believe that unless there is a legal aspect to it, or a systematic study done and put forward to the right authorities, things don't move, things don't get implemented. Mapping was extremely important. We didn't know, as, as you know, uh, ASI would have a restriction of 100 meters and 200 meters. You can do something within 100 meters of the monument and something with, within 200 meters. So that was a big challenge to market on the map and show it to the people and other stakeholders and this is where our 100 meters end and 200 meters end. Next please. Uh, and hence we undertook the assessment of where, what is the site, what is the area um, at uh, which we are looking at and how do we uh, look. We, we did a lot of uh, talking to all the stakeholders and I am happy that even uh, Professor Vasavda is here, is part of our discussions and uh, they have done a tremendous amount of work, individual capacity and a part of the SEPT University as well. Um, I mean we know where we are, uh, historically very important monument, next. Now this is where it is located in the uh, AMC boundary. The, Earlier it was in Auda, now it is part of AMC. Next. The uh, monuments which was developed at different time periods, you would see various colors. This was in later half of the 15th century and mid 15th century and later half of the 16th century. Next. It is, these are again various dots corresponding to the map and the uh, photographs. Yes. Yes. This is how the complex looks and I'm sure you would have gone there and seen the image from the, the Google Earth 
would give you also a time period how it has changed. If you, if you look at it, uh, how the lake has shrunk, how the monuments uh, have, the monuments itself has not changed, but the community around, the sediment around has changed a lot. Next. This is the 100 and 200 meters as uh, per what uh, ASI would say, a prohibited area and a regulated area. And for both areas, we have to make guidelines. And that is important. I mean, unless we tell people this is how you can build or not build is important. Otherwise, we all don't know. Next. Next. So the point was it let's bring a cohesiveness around and understand what happens at the uh, at these places. Uh, again, these are other monuments. I think we will uh, go fast here on what is around. So this is historical. Uh, it's a, just a sketch which we've created and how it is said that there was a river nearby and there were other two bastions. Maybe there was a, a possible route. Uh, people used to get down here through the boats and walk to the mosque. That was the importance. There, were, there was garden orchid and uh, there were other chikubadi there and uh, there were other dargas also nearby. We have uh, looked at the architectural significance of the uh, monument and uh, suggested action plans. We've also looked at the uh, festivals and how the social uh, fabric is around. We've looked at the infrastructure and where uh, this was a point where we realized that we have to get into this uh, and try to solve how the water could be brought back. A uh, number of um, studies and mapping for uh, the uh, topographical, what is the landscape like, how do we get water here, because earlier it was the uh, lowest point where the waters from the nearing area would be collected in the Makarba Lake and then it would overflow. Now due to urban pressures as mentioned, it got sta it started building up. The, the catchment area started, uh, were encroached. So the connection of getting water to Makarba and hence flowing back stopped. Plus there were leakages like uh, there's no drainage. The, the surrounding areas are not, uh, the, it's not under a TP scheme. You don't have drainage. So all the uh, uh, outflows from kitchens and toilets were flowing into the uh, Makarba Lake and hence again to the, the tank which is very sacred. And this was also needed to be dealt with. Um, so we discussed with AMC, we went to the engineers, uh, got them to the site, Auda and AMC were gracious enough to look at it in detail and figure out, they, they provided us some maps and understanding of where the their, their proposed lines and the current lines are and how could a solution be sought to bring water back. There was also a rumour. Uh, that the, the, the land around Makarba Lake was sold off and uh, that would be disastrous to uh, it had that happened and good that it was just a rumor we it, it hasn't happened so we believe that okay that was a rumor but um, the, uh, the the proposals had also looked at which were the areas which the uh, which are not under the town planning scheme and that we understood how we can bring back the water here. AMC engineers did work with us in detail and finally they found a solution where uh, an intersection which was one of the highways uh, was, uh, was creating a problem. They created a, um, um, they put some additional pipelines across the uh, highway and the water was brought into Makarva and due to again Good rains this time in Ahmedabad, the water reached Sarkhe. We have to see that this process continues and uh, we would, uh, we the water keeps flowing and uh, we, we, we process, because that's, that's the only beauty, uh, important beauty of the surrounding monuments where uh, uh, it gives a different uh, feel when you are there. So I guess, um, we are not going much into detail, I know the time is very short. Uh, we would like to take questions and uh, 
My colleague Anurag uh, Anthony was deeply involved into the making of the drawings and discussions with the stakeholders and has been involved deeply into that project. So here we are. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to.